Well, here's the uh, Ainsley circuit with the uh, pot on the timer, positive from the battery to the timer, so I can uh, set the power at the max or minimum that I want it. And I have uh, Glenn's resistor here that he made out of the 20 gauge nichrome wire. And, uh, basically, this little video is just to address. Um, the point that was brought up to me that somebody or uh, some people are thinking that the negative effect is coming from the capacitors on the 555 timer circuit. For example, these kind of caps. The blue one is like a 100 microfarad 35 volt polarized DC cap that's typically used as like a little filter cap to, to uh, suppress the spikes on the timer circuit. The other little caps are uh, basically necessary if you want a specific frequency range with uh, specific on and off times. Or you can use these other kind of caps. Any of these kind of caps like this are these little caps. So is, are those caps, um, well, the belief that the caps on the timer circuit are contributing to anything on the circuit is basically a... Uh, grasping at straws but anyway what I'm going to show right here is this um, this is what the waveform looks like on the load basically very yeah, pretty symmetrical I can smooth it out if I want right now it's hovering right about 0 DC and about 1.4 volts um, RMS and this is made possible by a timer circuit with no caps on it and these caps that I just showed you, uh, this would normally be straight across the uh, positive and negative rail to suppress the transients on the 555 circuit itself. These little caps marked 102 are 0 .001 microfarad caps. I normally have one on this side right there. I normally have one on this side over here, at least for these high frequency ranges and the uh, and um, duty cycle that I've been working at with these low values to show these negative numbers and this cap right here which is a zero let's see 0 0.01 microfarad 500 volt DC cap um, and this one I have uh, across the middle here so that's coming to pin 7 and the uh, ground so anyway these caps 100% removed none of these caps or even on the circuit. So how can it contribute if they don't even exist? Um, basically what I want to show is that uh, this is the setup right here with Harvey's um, recommended setup for the uh, probes. Uh, channel 1 and 2 basically are across this shunt current sensing resistor um, if you insist uh, right from the positive terminal and I got the multimeter here and this is showing the 12 volt battery voltage of 12.61 and this 0 0.25 ohm current sensing resistor which is basically these right here calibrated 5% carbon resistors 0.25 ohms okay so I have one coming off the positive terminal and then these two leads right here, one is going to the top of the load resistor and one is going directly through the pot then to the positive rail of the timer circuit. So I have pro channels one and two across both sides while the ground is going straight to the negative terminal on the battery. And this is to measure um, the positive side before and after the shunt. Okay, and the ground probes are on these two different shunts. One is, they're both tied directly to the negative terminal on the battery and the grounds of probes three and four are directly to the negative side which is essentially right there at the terminal and then on the other side of the negative probes are, um, or uh, other side of the shunts are the probes going to channels three and four which is showing this one right here which uh, would be the green channel on the scope is going to the source on the MOSFET. 
So this right here is measuring the current for the uh, load. And this one right here, uh, this black wire is going directly to the negative rail on the timer circuit. Okay, so all four probe grounds are tied right there at the negative terminal on the battery, literally all within like a half an inch of each other. Okay, so there's no wires in place, so there's no resistance and wires that is going through and everything else. These are accurate measurements. So anyway, this is what the uh, load looks like on a fluke. That fluke right there, the negative is on one end of the load, and the other end is this positive, that probe coming right here to that positive lead. Okay, so anyway, this is what's on the Tektronics. The yellow line is channel 1, which is closer to the positive terminal. Channel 2 is blue, which is further from the positive channel. And those will show the difference, basically, between the... Um, across the current sensing resistor at the positive of the terminal. Okay, channel number three is the purple channel for the load, four is green for the timer. Um, right here they both, both show uh, negative DC values and I just have these down to 50 millivolts. I'm really not doing power measurements here, I'm just showing you basically what the waveforms kind of look like. You can see the ringing on a load. This is the timer down here and they're basically kind of inverse from each other but you can see that this is the load because you do see the ringing. Here's the timer where you don't, but basically um, with enough uh, whole waveforms in there, you know, you're going to get negative DC averages on both. Um, I can increase these both, but basically even though it looks like it's in the line, it's that purple is kind of coming off the scope on both ends and it's not and usually if the uh, waveform is going off the top or the bottom it's going to say positive clipping or negative clipping but in either case if I can't see that it's totally inside the line I, I don't really like like to leave it outside the line even if it doesn't say that but I'll just bring it down here and this is mostly just so you can like I said see the waveform and so anyway this is what it's doing and I'll bring this uh, waveform right here on the load directly on a line doesn't matter which one it is I'll just bring this green one all the way out of sight just so we can just focus on this right here and I just want to show you that um, uh, let's see it's triggering right on the on pulse there okay and then it goes negative but you can see this ringing action here is not centered on the line. It's actually ringing tw down an angle coming down this way towards the negative. It's very slight, but you can see it. Okay, most of the ringing is happening below the zero line. Okay, then it, goes, then it goes negative before it's coming up to this positive, then it'll go positive, negative, and all the ringing is settling below zero. Then you got this negative. So you can see even visually, there's more going on below the line than above. And this is the timer right here where we can also see that there's the positive, comes negative, positive, negative, uh, positive, and this line right here, I don't know if you can see a little, it's kind of a little wavy right here, um, seeing that it's picking up some of that ringing most likely but most of it is below the line. Okay, so anyway, the point of this video is just to show the point that none of these effects are coming from the caps because if the caps are not on the timer circuit, then that argument is basically not an argument whatsoever.